In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I don't know if you are familiar with a rather recent phenomenon in the church called Lent Madness. Every year for the last few years during Lent, uh, as some enterprising priests have created a bracket of saints from all different times and ages, and then there's a contest to, to choose one each day over the other, and it works just like the, well, it goes on in March, same time as the, uh, um, as the, NBA, as the uh, NCAA tournament, so you're, you're working through the bracket until you get the final winner for Atlanta, which is the, the Golden Halo Award. Um, on the first day of Lent Madness this year, the contest was between Martha of Bethany and Mary of Bethany, the two sisters we heard about today. The result of that on the first day was Martha won in a landslide over Mary. But not only that, at the end of all Lent, it was Martha who took the golden halo. It was an interesting thing because it seems a lot of people identify with Martha, especially in this story. You know, Martha, who's trying to be a good hostess, and she's got all these people in her house, and she's running around like crazy trying to get everything done, and Mary is not even paying attention, sitting at Jesus' feet, and Martha loses it, like we would. Well, I thought maybe we should take a closer look at this story and see what's actually going on here. So yes, Jesus has come with his disciples and it's not just 12 of them. Uh, we just read a few weeks ago about Jesus sending out 70 of them that weren't part of the 12. So Jesus had an entourage of at least 100. And you've got all of these people and they've come to the house of Martha and Mary and Lazarus and Martha is trying to be a host with all these people in and around her house. Yeah, I can see that she'd be really busy. But she appears to be trying to do it all by herself. When it, the part where it says, but Martha was distracted by her many tasks. I went back and looked at the actual Greek there. And the word that they translate distracted, um, it has its root meaning to draw out in a circle or to wheel about. We would say in the vernacular today, she was running around in circles. Quite literally what it says, she was running around in circles trying to serve everyone. And then because of this going on, she went to Jesus. Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Jesus' response is a little surprising. Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. Again, I went back and looked at the Greek here. Martha, Martha, you are anxious and agitated by many things. And I think we can begin to see why Jesus is responding. Running around in circles, anxious and agitated, is no way to live a life. And Jesus is trying to get her to focus back to get her priorities straight. What is most important? Is it running around in circles, anxious and agitated, trying to get things done? I mean, things do need to be done. But is that what Martha needs to be focusing on? There's more. Now, who's the conflict with here? It's not between Martha and Jesus. It's not between Mary and Jesus. It's between Mary and Martha, the two sisters. And yet, Martha goes not to her sister, but to Jesus, right? With this very uh, disingenuous way of addressing the problem. Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work? Tell her to help me. This is what's known as triangulation. 
The problem, the issue is between Mary and Martha. Mary, Martha should be going to Mary and saying, Martha, Mary, would you please get up and help me? But no, she goes to Jesus, and she wants Jesus to fix it for her. And Jesus, being a smart man, was not about to get into that triangle. And so he says, no, I'm not going to. She's made her choice. I'm not going to take it away from her. But there's more. So Martha is running around, anxious and agitated and upset. She tries to triangle Jesus in to force her sister to help her. And Jesus, being smart, doesn't. Martha could have asked for help. You know, in this entourage of probably around 100 people, there were a lot of people who could probably get up and help her. Many of the disciples uh, were couples, right? Had children even with them. Martha didn't ask for help. How many times do we sometimes do that too? We're going to be great. We're going to take care of it. We're going to do it all by ourselves. When the more obvious thing, ask for help. If it's an overwhelming task, ask for help. That's why we're all here together. We help each other. Martha didn't do that. And then finally, we need to think back about the time and the culture, which actually is not all that different from today. In that patriarchal culture, it was expected that it was a woman's job to serve and take clean and take care of things. And it was a man's job to sit at Jesus' feet and learn. But, Martha, but Mary, a woman, chose to sit at Jesus' feet, and he allowed it. Now this is really remarkable, because Jesus was saying, Mary is free to choose to serve how she believes she's called, what, what is right for her. And if she has chosen to sit at Jesus' feet, Jesus says, no one's going to take that away from her. I mean, think about it. You know, Paul, when Paul talks about that in Christ we have been set free, and he also says that in Christ there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, this is what he's talking about. Not that with freedom we can just do anything we want, but in Christ, we are free to serve Christ in the world as best fits us. That we have been called into this and the typical gender and whatever roles that we've been locked into by culture don't apply in the church. We are free to serve and follow good. I find it interesting these days, we've been pretty good about allowing women to start taking on important leadership roles and the like that used to be reserved for men. What I find puzzling, and I'm as guilty of this as anyone, is men don't seem to be very good about also picking up roles that were previously reserved for women. I mean, I don't generally first thing think of cleaning the house and whatever that my wife usually does, and I should. But in Christ, we are free. We're free to serve. We're free to live our lives. Christ has given us the responsibility to make our own choices and to live our lives. This, I think, is what Paul was talking about in the epistle today. When Paul said, says, it is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. To be mature in Christ is to take responsibility for our, for our actions, for our work, for our faith, for our relationships. Not necessarily running around in circles, being anxious and agitated, but taking responsibility for our place and our time, and to do what, what it is God is calling us to do. Much easier said than done. But that, again, is the goal of a life in faith, 
which is to come to the point where we can serve God with a free conscience and a free will, able to be responsible for our part in the great economy of the gospel of God in all the various ways that the body of Christ, the church, works out God's call to serve God and the world through this church headed by Christ. That's our goal. And Jesus, in pointing out to Martha that she had missed it, is also helping us to see how we might continue to grow and mature in faith. Amen.